What's up, y'all? Billy from Permapastures Farm. One of those videos where we gotta eat a little bit of crow, maybe, because we don't know what's gonna happen. And I'm talking about this bed that's behind me right now. We got superior potatoes in there, and then behind it, the green stuff you see, well, that is horseradish, and Michelle loves horseradish. But horseradish and potatoes go together like peanut butter and jelly for some people, but they certainly love to grow together because the horseradish does wonderful things, and the potatoes, obviously, they do wonderful things. Here's where we get into the pickle. We should have probably got these out of the ground about a month ago. We got another bed over here. That's a whole nother variety. They're not quite ready, but we don't know what we're expecting in here. So we're all gonna find out together. And look, folks, let me just say this. People tend to think because you have a YouTube channel and because you do this stuff, you know, you feed yourself, you do all these different things that you're the subject matter expert. In some cases, possibly, but in other cases, you fall just like everybody else. And what do I mean by that? We are going at 100 miles an hour in 10,000 different places, trying to do too much, and it's just that time of year. You know, look, y'all, you're going you're gonna to find times where you just can't keep up. Where you got this going on, you got that going on, you got this place, and you got all these unexpected things that seem to happen every single day. When you live this lifestyle, and anybody that does knows, you're going to have things like, oh, shoot, a cow got out, a sheep got out, chickens are all over the place. We had an unexpected death, whatever the case may be, those things happen. So don't beat yourself up about it. In this case, like I said, we probably should and could have made time. We just didn't. So we don't know what's going to happen when we get down in here. So got potato fork in hand, and it's time to go to work. We're going to all find out together. Mulch. This is all that straw that we got out of the chickens. We let the chickens work it over. Then we put it up in here. We're going to reuse this stuff. It's crazy to get rid of it. So I'm just going to grab a hold of it, throw it off here in a pile. We've got one potato showing its head up here. And let me just kind of clean that up a little bit more as best we can. Because when it's all said and done, we don't want our carbon underneath. Got a mulch pile right there. Got one right there. Now, we essentially got three rows down through here. Now it's time to see what we got waiting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ain't even going to lie, y'all. Michelle, you were tripping, thinking this thing was going to be a mess. She's back here shaking her head right now. But right now, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Look, we got so much to do. We're just gonna go ahead and put this thing on time lapse. We're gonna go through here and collect these bad boys. It's always a good sign. Look at these big old worms, man. I'm seeing more worms than, I mean, I can't even get over how many are down in here. I don't want to disturb them too much, y'all. Look, you, in your soil, your worms are some of your top predators, man. When I'm seeing those, and this soil was not this wonderful when we started. So to see it turn around and I'm seeing all this fungal hypha, that's too small and down here at the film. But I mean, we're seeing some really, really good stuff down in here. So we're just gonna drive on. And so far, these potatoes are looking absolutely wonderful. Wouldn't you agree, honey? Yep. Alrighty. This is what I'm talking about. Rub-a-dub-dub is trying to sit down and grub. And I mean grub worms too. I mean, I have never seen so many worms ever, y'all. This is, I mean, big, giant, fat ones. And most of this seems like worm castings up in here. And that's a good place to be. And we've done a lot of this. I mean, this was awful soil before. We're turning it around. It's getting better and better and better. But, you know, in this bed that's basically four and a half and then going this way by six, we got an entire bucket worth just out of this bed. And the rest of it down there is horseradish. So it's going to come up too. And of course, you know, there's a lot of complaints about horseradish as far as, you know, it's a, once you put it in, it's a nightmare to get out. But here's the cool thing about growing these potatoes. We got those over there that ain't ready yet. 
which buys us time to be able to get these up. And then we got a few other beds that need to get up too. But we're only gonna focus on this one today. So now what's next is to get that horseradish out of here. We're gonna show you what's taking its place. Well, I stand corrected. I didn't realize Michelle had um, more potatoes underneath that horseradish. So we got a pile of horseradish down there, a whole bucket and about a quarter bucket here, potatoes out of this four and a half by 12 foot bed. And we got them in late as I recall. So this ain't a bad haul. And this is just one of many places. We got those over there. We got more around front and we got some in some other places, but those are different applications altogether. And you might even see a preparedness quotient and some of the others that we got going. Now, this is one thing that a lot of people don't cover. What do you do now that you got it cleared out? I'm gonna show you what we do, and I think you're gonna dig it. Just in this bed and a couple of others, we got three and a half buckets of red, white, little fingerling looking things. We got a whole variety of them there, and we still got more to do. We got this bed, and we got a bunch down the hill. But that'll be another video because they're completely different applications. Now, soil does not like to be naked. If you have your garden and it's covered, if we didn't do anything else, we would at least take this mulch and put it on there. And this is, a lot of it has already been decomposed down into the soil. Folks, I've never seen more worms in my life. And they are down here and in the other beds. In fact, this bed is mostly worm castings. It's, it's crazy. But in order to keep it that way, look, People are going to say, oh, I do it this way, I do it that. Look, man, I'm not fusing DNA here. I'm just going to take this Dutch white clover and I'm just going to sprinkle it all throughout here because if you don't cover that area with something, trust me, here's what's going to happen. Nature, through the sun, is going to bake that soil and every worm that I've just seen down in there is going to be cooked, fried, and baked. Or, better still, they're going to go deeper and they're probably not gonna come back unless they got a reason to be. Okay, that's number one. Number two, your compaction, where that really comes from is when you have a problem with the rain coming down from the sky, those little drops hit and they, they just compact that soil and the sun, rain, sun, rain, you get it. So in nature, do you see anything out there that's naked on purpose? If it is, then I submit to you that that is not the way nature would prefer to be. This is the way nature would like. So we got this clover in here and I'm about done. And like I said, I'm, I'm going heavy because we're gonna do this Fukuoka style. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, read the book, One Straw Revolution. This is a dude that was permaculture before permaculture became cool. Now that we got that on there, we're just gonna scatter that up a little bit, then we'll move on. Okay. Well. We had a ton of this stuff. I swear, when we first put it out here, this stuff was probably a foot high. Now I'm gonna reuse it because it's already kind of halfway broken down. And then later on, I guess you don't need to see that part. We'll come by and add a little more straw, probably after we have the chickens go through it. But just like that, scatter mulching all the way through here. And we're gonna put the old stuff on the bottom. And then if we add anything more, it'll go to the top. Only thing left to do, water it in. And so now the cool thing about having this clover in the cool thing about having this clover in here is it's gonna occupy the space until we're ready to do something. Still a little bit warm out for certain things, and Michelle's got planning certain things she wants to put in here. And that's what'll happen. I mean, like I said, in accordance with the whole Fukuoka thing, you just take out what you need in terms of these nitrogen fixers and then put in what you want. And then maybe the, you know, the clover can keep growing around it. There's a bunch of different ways in which you can go about it, but this is what we have. Well, folks, for what we did out here, this is really not a bad harvest at all, especially for two people. And this is only the tip of the iceberg as far as what we have. We got, we got stuff in a centropic kind of design further down the hill, and we'll cover that when the time's right. And then, of course, over here, I guess we won't need to go back to that. But, folks, if you're looking for those things... If you're looking for all those wonderful things that you can put away for a while, you know, potatoes, sweet potatoes, storage crops, you know, things that you can 
in these uncertain times where you're going to pay a fortune because these things are better than anything you can hope to find organic. We don't use any drugs, folks. That's what I'm trying to, I mean, you could see that it was companion planted with the uh, horseradish that we got over here. There's no, there's no drugs involved. We don't have a bad season one year and say, like we did last year. If you go back and look at the videos, it wasn't wonderful for potatoes last year, but it has been so far this year. Because if we don't have a wonderful thing, then we go back to the drawing board and say, okay, where do we mess up? Because it always comes down to the soil. And so the only thing that was added into these beds, and I mean the only thing, has been compost extract. That's it. And now we got so many top predators in the form of worms that is blowing my mind. These beds are practically filled with nothing but worm castings. So folks, this isn't difficult. And you don't need the drug companies to get you off and running. This is how your great, great grandparents would have done it years ago. And that's what we're trying to bring back. Hopefully this has been a blessing to you. At the end of August, Homesteaders United Jamboree, I'm gonna be there. And guess what? Latest surprise, William is gonna be there as well. And for all of you folks that want to know everything about compost, we're going to be showing you how we make the stuff we put in here. It's not going to be on a TV screen. It's not going to be anything like that. We're going to show you in person. We're going to build them. We're going to show you how to flip them. We're going to show you how you can do all this stuff at home. And there's a lot of other things going on there. And we're going to be feeding you dinner every night. So you got to love that. Homesteaders United Jamboree coming up August 29th through the 31st. 30th is my birthday, so hope to see you there and celebrate with me. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. Here's part of the reasons why. We'll see y'all next time.